Hey guys, it's Destiny and our newest and cutest Landau sibling, Lynx, is finally released. In today's video, we're going to go over the essentials of Lynx, cool team concepts, builds, and much more. Without further ado, let's get straight into the tuna. Get it? Since Lynx has a can of tuna. Okay, if you guys enjoy videos like these, make sure to subscribe and now let's actually get into the video. Lynx is our newest abundance character who is also a quantum character. Lynx's kit honestly has insane utility as she can team wide heal, team wide cleanse for nasty debuffs, which Damage over time has become pretty common now in Memory of Chaos and Swarm Disaster can apply to this as well, and she could do much more as well. Lynx has a pretty unique ability with her skill, which can heal an ally and also apply Survival Response, which can increase an ally's max HP based on her max HP and apply a taunt to allies who are Preservation or Destruction, which can make team building pretty interesting. As for her ultimate, it provides the much needed team-wide cleanse, plus having a low-cost ultimate makes it even better. As as for her talent, teammates who are affected by Lynx's skill or ultimate will have continuous healing, which is awesome for more passive healing and being able to keep the team healthy on Granola health bars. Her technique grants the continuous healing at the start of battle, which is pretty useful for having immediate continuous healing active for the team. As for Lynx's traces, she gets defense, effect resistance, and HP from her sub traces, which is pretty good for increasing her own sustainability and the ability to resist debuffs as well with her effect resistance, which can help her be consistent to keep the team alive as well, and she also has a trace to resist crowd control debuffs by 35%. Lynx also has a trace to recover energy when an ally with survival response gets hit, and her final trace extends the continuous healing duration by an extra turn, which allows her continuous healing to actually last for three turns now. Overall, Lynx has amazing utility, and to take advantage of this utility, let's go over how to play her and team concepts. Using Lynx on a team is pretty simple as you'll want to use your skill on teammates that need healing and for preservation or destruction teammates to have more taunts on them, which allows them to have a higher likelihood of being targeted more than other teammates. She can also be pretty skill points efficient too as you can use her skill when needed and not every turn she goes. Also, survival response lasts based on the ally's turn and not Lynx's turn. So you can make a super sonic speed Lynx for fast energy regeneration and also being super skill point positive as a result. But I'll get into her builds a bit later. As for her ultimate, I'd recommend using this whenever the team has been inflicted with crowd control debuffs and damage over time debuffs, such as imprisonment, wind shear, and so on. Also using it when your team has low health is pretty nice as well, which can be pretty good to have team-wide emergency heals. The continuous healing is also pretty good for having the team have consistent passive healing and overall Lynx can be used as any other sustain for the most part as her goal is to keep the team alive, regenerate energy at a good rate in order to have her ultimate ready as needed and so on. As for team concepts, she can honestly be used on any team you want as a healer, but I thought I'd mention some cool and fun combinations of partners. The first pairing is Lynx, which is Lynx and Blade. So what they end up doing is Lynx puts survival response on Blade, so he gets hit more and hits the enemy so much with his follow-up attacks that when you blink, the mobs are already defeated, which is why it's called Blinks. Lynx can also increase his max HP, which benefits his skill kit and overall can be an amazing partner for Blade. The next pairing is Clara and Lynx, which is Savrock's Vengeance. Similar concept as the Blade pairing, Lynx will increase the likelihood of Clara being hit even further, which means Clara will be hit more often, and Savrock will take vengeance for the injustice against Clara. And you simply win, as long as you can keep Clara's health all good and dandy. Overall, this pairing can be pretty good as well and also pretty fun. Next concept is Mono Quantum, which can be full quantum team that involves Silverwolf to ensure quantum weakness is inflicted onto enemies. And overall, you could do a bunch of damage to the enemy as well as have an awesome sustain with Lynx and possibly even Fushun as well. One more fun idea is the Landu family. You can use Lynx's skill on Jeppy, which makes his likelihood of being targeted even more. And double sustain can be pretty cool for pretty tough fights to ensure the team stays alive no problem. I know that Jafar is typically a solo sustain, but it's still a pretty fun team to consider overall if you really want to use them together. But this definitely makes me want to also fully build my Serval to make the true Landu family. So when creating a team, I'd go with the concept of main DPS, Link sustain, buffer or debuffer, and another buffer or debuffer or a sub DPS. Now though, to take full advantage of Link's kit, 
let's go over some builds for her. For building links, I suggest the Wandering Cloud set for more outgoing healing, Guard of Withering Snow to decrease the damage links takes, and Messenger Traversing Hackerspace for more speed and team-wide speed increases with our awesome ultimate. You can also consider Longvious Disciple 2-piece alongside any of these sets mentioned for more HP and either more outgoing healing, speed, or decreased damage taken. For planar sets, I recommend Broken Keel as links can easily get to the 30% effect resistance or more to effectively give your team a 10% crit damage increase at all times. Another recommendation is Fleet of the Ageless, which gives the team an 8% attack increase and also a 12% HP increase. For main stats and subsets, I recommend HP or outgoing healing body depending on what you get. HP or speed boots, preferably speed though for fast links. Defense or HP sphere depending on where your HP stat is. And defense can help with more survivability for links as well, which is why you might want to consider defense. And lastly, Energy Regeneration Rope or HP Rope. But of course, if you do build her very fast and she's able to basic attack pretty often, then you might just want to go with the HP Rope as a result. For subsets, I would recommend HP, Speed, Effect Resistance for less debuffs affecting links, and Defense for more survivability for links. As for Light Cones, a majority of the Abundance Light Cones benefit links because of what they provide. I highly recommend Bailu's Light Cone, Warmth shortens Cold Nights for more maximum HP, and Bailu's also gives more outgoing healing. Shared Feeling is good for outgoing healing and slight energy regeneration for the team. Post Stop is very good for energy regen and more outgoing healing when using her ultimate. And Perfect Timing is a very good option as well, since Lynx will get even more effect resistance and also get more outgoing healing based on how much effect resistance she has. Lastly, for a three-star option, if you do not have any of the other options mentioned, I recommend the three-star Cornucopia for more outgoing healing when using your skill or ultimate. So yeah, pretty much most of the Abundance Light Cones can have a pretty good use on Lynx, which makes her pretty easy to build in my opinion. Lastly, I want to go over her pull value in Eidolons. Honestly, Lynx has really, really good Eidolons that I would highly recommend, as E1 allows Lynx to have increased outgoing healing for allies who have 50% or less health, which is awesome for clutch moments to make sure Big Sister Serval does not go down with, let's just say she had 20 health remaining. E2 is awesome for an ally avoiding a debuff with survival response. This allows for one debuff to be resistant when survival response is active. 4 is good for buffing up whoever has survival response as 3% of Lynx's max HP, will be converted to increased attack for that ally. Lastly, her E6 boosts the max HP of an ally with survival response by an additional 6% of Lynx's health and increases her effect resistance by 30%. This allows Broken Peel to automatically activate and it's also pretty awesome for a good amount of outgoing healing with perfect timing. Overall, her Eidolons are awesome for more utility for allies who lose too much health and also being able to provide even more benefits to an ally with survival response. When it comes to her pull value, I highly, highly recommend every player tries to get one Lynx since her utility even at E0 is honestly amazing. But that'll be all for my video on Lynx. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did and also like Lynx, make sure to subscribe, leave a like to support the video and I hope you all have an awesome day. Peace.